HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast uh, is continuing to gain recognition as a wonderful resource for business owners, business leaders, sales professionals, you know, you name it, uh, and, and I am thrilled about that. Um, it is really because of the guests who join me. These are folks who have expertise in a certain area of business, and they give of their time and their talent uh, to have a conversation with me where they share their expertise with all of you. That way you can take what you need, you can implement these ideas, you can reach out to these guests, and you can find the answers and solutions that you're looking for. Today my guest is Janelle Bruland. Janelle is an entrepreneur, business leader, and high performance coach who inspires others to live highly engaged, impactful, and successful lives. She's founder and chief executive officer of MSNW, a company she started in her living room in 1995 with a handful of employees. Today, MSNW has grown under Janelle's leadership into a regional facility management company named one of the fastest growing private companies by both Inc. Magazine and the Puget Sound Business Journal. Janelle has won numerous awards, including the SBA Washington Business Person of the Year and the Nellie Cashman Woman Business Owner of the Year. Her first book, 
the success lie is publishing in April of 2019. Thanks so much for joining me today, Janelle. Thank you, Diane. I'm so excited to be a part of your show. Well, I am thrilled to have you here. I love this whole concept of the success lie, so I'm so excited that we're going to be digging into it. Um, I do want to start, however, I'm wondering if you would give us, uh, you know, a, a, like a quick snapshot of your entrepreneurial journey. I, I find this so interesting, you know, starting this business in your living room and having grown it so much. I, I'm just curious about it. So if you don't mind sharing. No, I, I'd be happy to, Diane. So thank you. Well, over 20 years ago, I began a business journey that has been life-changing for me. I was actually nine months pregnant with my second daughter, and I made a small yet significant choice to become an entrepreneur and started Management Services Northwest. And I, I knew this choice would be challenging to be a, a business owner to make that decision, and I knew there would be opportunities as well. But I thought it would be a great side investment that I could do while allowing me to be a mom. Wow. So it was, it was an exciting, it's been an exhilarating ride. And as we started out, I believe if we created a company culture of care for our team and our clients, and we took care of our clients' facilities as if they were our own, that we could really make a difference and the company would grow. And it has been quite a journey, Diane. And as founder and CEO, I've been privileged to see this company grow over the years from a small startup into a thriving regional company and an industry leader. And I have to say, I, I did not do it alone. Uh, I have had, and I'm so thankful for the passionate, dedicated team members that have been with me along the way, over 450 of them now, and oh, some wonderful wow, client partners. Yeah. <laughs> and I have some wonderful client partners as well. And that's really made the difference. And we've been going strong for over a couple decades and, and making a, a positive impact. And in, in talking about my team, what I really learned through this experience is I am super passionate about leadership and helping people grow and improve. And that's how uh, my leadership development company started Legacy Leader, and so now I coach entrepreneurs and business professionals how they can improve their leadership and design a life of significance. Ah, I see. Okay, that, that's really great. I, I too, am, you know, a, a leadership is a big passion of mine, too, because I think um, – I think people decision make for what I will call the wrong reasons and then wonder why they get the results that they get. So, um, I, yes. I think it's, yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I think they're, they're well intentioned, uh, but their, their decision making is tied more to an emotional, um, um, trigger than necessarily something that's best for their business. Good point. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I find it fascinating that you decided to start this business when you were pregnant with your second child. <laughs> and so uh, my question becomes, is it, I mean, obviously it is because you did it, but how is it really possible that to build a thriving business and keep balance in those other areas of your life? That's a good point. It's, it's not easy. It really isn't, but you can do it. It's most definitely possible. And, and definitely there were times in growing my business and managing my family that I was running on fumes. And also for many years, I was on my own as a single mom. And so especially hard to keep that balance between work and home and as I mentioned, my facility management company, that's emergency services, and, and it's an industry that's on 24-7 and, and makes it really challenging to stay on top of everything. Wow. And it, yeah, it, it definitely is a challenge. And being an entrepreneur, as you know, is an exhilarating and challenging adventure. It's a roller coaster of highs and lows. And one moment you're on the top of the world because you won a new client, you've had a great day, and then the next moment you crash to the earth at a lightning pace because something 
has uh, come your way, a problem. Uh, you, you're not sure if you're going to be able to meet payroll. And sometimes that happens within a 24-hour period. <laughs> so it, it can be, <laughs> it can be a, a challenge for sure. And, and then this is just one aspect of your life, right? That's, that's just work. And then you add to it the desire to be present with your family, to have some relationships with friends, to get back to your community. The list goes on and on. And certainly you can be overwhelmed. And I found I got caught up in not having balance at times for sure. It's, that's yeah. the crazy world that we live in. And I made a lot of mistakes, and I learned a lot of really valuable lessons on the way. And really, the pivotal point for me, Diane, was I learned to think beyond having a successful career to really knowing and wanting I, I had to have a successful and significant life. And I realized that that was up to me, and the, I realized the important truth is that the choice was mine and mine alone to have the best life and the life that I wanted. So it's really about making that choice, knowing what you want, what's most important, and making that choice to live your life that way. Wow, I, I love that. And and as you're saying it, I'm thinking, um, so we have to be careful about trying to run our business or live our lives in the way that we think others expect us to and really take ownership of, okay, but this is what success looks like to me. That's right. That's right. We can give ourselves permission to live life on our own terms and success on our own terms. And that's where the danger comes is when we follow what we think everybody else is doing or those outside influences on what we should be doing rather than yeah. really looking to our hearts and what, we are passionate about what's most important to us and really being committed to living by those, those values. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, and I mentioned earlier that, that you have this new book, the success lie. What is the biggest lie about success in, in your estimation? And, and how do you, how would you say it's impacting us as business owners and, and leaders? Thanks, Diane. Through my own pursuit of success and working with other business leaders, I discovered there is a pervasive lie in the world today. And the lie is really becoming this epidemic because so many of us have bought into it and we don't even know it. And it is the lie of success. And entrepreneurs and business professionals everywhere have bought into the lie that constantly requires more, more, more. To achieve success, you've, you've got to do more. You've got to work harder. You've got to work longer. Sacrifice everything, even your health and your family. And people are just overcommitted and overscheduled and overwhelmed. And that is the biggest lie, in my opinion, is, is just this being overcommitted. And out of that, we are overwhelmed. And I was compelled to write the success lie because I've been there. And I want to share that there's another way. I found another way. And as I mentioned before, I discovered that it is the choice of ours. It's your choice to get off of this treadmill. Society shows us the way to success and to take your life back. And I can show you how because I've done it. I've had success. And my goal is to shatter the success life. I think that is a very good, <laughs> good call. I, I can feel it, you, you know, as, as you're talking about it. And I'm thinking, boy, you know, I so get this. I, I mean, I think we do it with our children too. But as a business owner um, I, and being out there in the small business community and interacting with these folks, and there's just this whole expectation that really – from what I've seen, negatively impacts people's ability to really achieve success because they're chasing after something that they don't necessarily want or believe in, and they're trying to live um, th this life that other people have said they're they're supposed to. That's exactly right. You're you're just spot on, and oftentimes I've seen other business leaders who have gained some success, maybe even exponential success, but 
like you say, it's it's success that others have wanted for them and maybe something they don't want for themselves. And then they find themselves wanting and, and feeling empty. Or or they have this high when you achieve something, you win this award and it all feels good, but then and then what? And then, then yeah. you're chasing after the next thing again, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Right. And and so I find, I think it's so interesting when you talk about living a life of significance because I think that is the thing that ends up missing when people are, you know, going after something that isn't really what for them is meaningful. Mhm. Yeah. Yes. Boy. Okay. Now you also talk about this uh, living on automatic. What does that mean? I can best illustrate it with a story. Uh, my husband and I live in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, and we enjoy kayaking on the ocean in Birch Bay, where, where we live. And I'll tell you, Diane, there's nothing like being out on the water on a warm summer evening, and the sun is setting, and it's creating the shimmer of light on the water. And one of the times that I was out there, I was so busy gazing at this sunset and being part of this beautiful experience that I stopped kind of paying attention to where I was. And all of a sudden I looked up and I was way further offshore than I thought I was, way Ooh. further offshore than I should be. And in fact, was going out toward this thoroughfare, which is near us, that the big tankers and cruise ships go through. And I'm looking at this and going, okay, my kayak, little kayak up against this 14 story cruise ship, not a good idea. <laughs> so I got myself out of there, obviously. But this kayak experience reminded me that our lives can be like this, where we get so busy and so caught up in our lives and the busyness of it all and running a company and raising a family that we stop paying attention to where we're really going. And one day we wake up and we find ourselves where we never expected we would be. We didn't, we didn't want to gain those extra 30 pounds or we didn't want to end up in this strained relationship or maybe even a divorce because we've made some choices along the way to put that most important person in the back seat to other things or just those other small what we think are insignificant choices that take us where we don't want to go. And the good news of living on automatic that instead of that, we can choose intentional living. And you talked about that life is significant. And that's all about intentionality. And, and in my book, I provide a roadmap of exactly how to do this and help you design the life that you've always wanted, that, that life of significance. Got it. Okay. That's a, that's a great example. That story is a great example. I completely understand it. That there are times when um, I, I I know even for myself I will get to a place where I won't even remember having you know spent a couple of days and I know it's because I am so heads down in whatever it is 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 I'm thinking about it at the time that I'm missing everything else that's going on around me miss all the signals the conversations yeah. Everything. Right. Right. Wow. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. I have to take a quick sponsor break and then I have some more questions for you. Sounds Accelerate great. Your, Thank you. You bet. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash business growth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are The Power of Positive Coaching by Lee Kalan and Leading Loyalty by Lena Renee. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with Janelle Bruland about what she refers to as the success lie, which I totally get. Uh, okay, so Janelle, um, so Janelle, you talk about 
uh, the overwhelm of keeping up with success. And I know people are listening to this thinking to themselves, yep, that is me. I can totally relate to that. So how do we overcome that feeling? Yes, um, I bet that people can relate, and I can too. We struggle with way too many balls, and we can find ourselves frustrated and overwhelmed in this fast-paced world that we live in, and technology is making it even worse with this constant barrage of communication. And I, I think a big part of it is that we as business owners and leaders do not take the time to disconnect and to rejuvenate, to take care of ourselves. For some reason, we bought into the lie that we have to be on all the time. I bought into this myself, and the CEOs I coach struggle with the same thing. At a meeting I had a while back, I asked the question of how many of them had actually unplugged, meaning completely shut off from their email and their work for a vacation. And astonishing, not one person could commit that they had been able to unplug for even 24 hours. Wow. And that is, a, yeah, it, it is a problem. And you simply don't need to live like this. And the fact that we can now answer phones and texts on our wrists and just be constantly on and connected with anywhere in the world, we have to make that decision to, to shut off. And it's important for us to take time to take care of ourselves, to rejuvenate so that we can operate at our best. And we really need to give ourselves permission to do this. And so for myself, making that con commitment to take time to unwind, to rejuvenate, to really unplug from work has, has really made a difference in my life. And I know that it can make difference in other people's lives as well. Yeah, I, I, I just, I love that. Um, because I think with all of this technology, you know, as you say, we have actually created this monster that we have to be on all the time. And so, of course, we're overwhelmed because we never have that space, that quiet, that, you know, where our brain can actually absorb thoughts and information. Yes, exactly. It's tough. Yeah. It's a choice. <laughs> yeah, it is a choice. I know that's such a good point. You're you're so right. And and boy, I mean, if people don't hear anything else, they really need to hear that that they get to choose that it's okay to choose how they interact, how that you know if they unplug, what they're going after, um, all of those things. Um, so speaking of which, uh, the, this choice and and whatnot, I. I Focus seems to be um, a challenge, let me say, for an awful lot of business leaders. And, and I'm sure it's because of all of these, you know, influences coming at us from all different directions. Um, but is there a way that business leaders can keep focused on the things they're supposed to be doing, the responsibilities that they have on a daily basis that they need to be able to accomplish? Yes, I, I believe so, and I have some tips and things that I've used that have helped me. And you know, as we were talking about the constant interruptions that we have, uh, the constantly being connected to technology makes it really dif difficult to do that. And I think it's important to realize that the responsibilities that we have are not going to go away. And as, as business owners, we're going to have a lot of things, a lot of balls that we are having to manage and be responsible for. So understanding that those are not going to go away, but we can learn to better manage them and improve the time we spend working. We all have 24 hours in the day, and we can choose how we're going to use those. We can learn to be our most focused and our most productive. And by doing this and following some, some tips, I found that I can actually work less and achieve more by putting some practices in place. And for myself, I've ignited what I like to call my focus superpower. And it, it really does it really does work for me. And we have to realize we're not Superman or Superwoman, but we can ignite this focus superpower. And you you nailed it when you talked about how do we work on those most important things. And 
we have to look for ourselves and determine what are those most important priorities. And I like to think of it as what are the most critical things I need to be working on to bring my business forward. And we need to narrow that focus down to three to five of those most important priorities. And then we have to be prepared to fight against the distractions that will invariably come our way to, to work on those things. Uh, something that I do that's been really helpful for me is I use my calendar for everything. That's a great management tool for me. And I call some focus time that I put aside as power blocks. And I literally put appointments with myself in the calendar and I call them my power blocks. And I protect those to work on those most important things that I need to be working on. And I let people know that that is uninterrupted time. I make sure that I free myself of distractions and then I can focus and really be productive in that time. And it's amazing when you put your phone away and you shut off your email and you focus on only that most important priority that you want to work on for that block of time. It's amazing how you get into this flow and you're highly energized and it's fun and you're productive. And I, I shaved hours off of, my, off of my work time by doing this. I so love that. I am so glad that you just said that I'm currently working with a group of entrepreneurs on finding their focus, and uh, I'm going to make them listen to this episode. <laughs> because... Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> That's great. I mean, this is something that, that I say to them because this is one of the biggest problems, I think, that people think, leaders think they're supposed to allow interruptions, that they're supposed to be available, that they're supposed to you know, this open door policy and all that. And, and yeah, I, I'm sure you are, but not all the time. And you have to reserve time for yourself to get the things done. I loved what you said about things that move my business forward. I, I think we forget yeah. that that is really our responsibility. Definitely. Definitely. That's what our teams need. And by giving them some space and some additional responsibility, they're going to step up in their own leadership. Yeah. If we're, we constantly have to be involved in everything, then we don't give them a chance to grow. So really by letting our teams know, these are the priorities that I'm going to be working on, and I need your support in that. And they're sharing with you what their priorities are, and you're supporting them. Um, it, it gives both of you a chance to be working on the things most of the time that you should be working on and they should be working on. And that just, that brings your entire business forward by doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, is this blocking out these um, power times, is this uh, this intentional calendaring that you talk about or is that something else? No, that is, well, that's part of it. Yeah. Okay. And part of my intentional calendaring is setting aside some blocks. Um, but the intentional calendaring, and thanks for, for bringing that up, it's a process that developed out of a situation that happened to me a few years ago. And I had a colleague and good friend of mine who called me one day at my office, and she wanted to get together for coffee. And I hadn't heard from her in a while, and I was really happy to hear from her and excited to get together and catch up. And I said, you know, just, just a moment, let me pull up my calendar and, and let's see when we can get together. And uh, the minute stretched as I was reviewing my calendar, and I realized that I couldn't put her in for at least a month because wow. I had myself so overscheduled. And I think we all do this. I talked about in the beginning how we're overcommitted, we're overscheduled, we keep taking on more and more. And when this happened to me, it was one of those aha moments, and I thought, this is nuts. I don't even have time to get together for coffee with a good friend. And that's what caused me to design what I call an intentional calendaring process. And it involves putting aside all of those outside, in, in, outside influences, again, that are telling you what you should do and looking deep inside to determine your own values and priorities. And in my intentional calendaring practice, I show you how to create a system that prioritizes your schedule according to your most important priorities. So that would be, as we talked about, those three to five things and doing these power blocks where you can set aside time for that. Uh, it reduces your schedule and your to-do list, and it helps you create space in your calendar and your life for the things that matter most to you. 
and then the discipline to eliminate everything else. And it does require learning how to say no and, and some, to some of those good things. Because as I said, we only have that 24 hours in the day and we have to choose how we want to use it. And I think people need to remember that this actually helps you gain time, you gain productivity. I mean, you get things done and you gain time all at the same time. Using time Absolutely. More. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, which is so critically important because I can hear people thinking to themselves, okay, seriously, if I do that, then I'm, I'm, not go, you know, if I free up time, there's things I'm not going to get done, but it actually makes you much more efficient. Right. It it definitely gives you more time, and I and I think it's okay. It's so hard to say no. You know, we love to say yes, and there are so many good things to say yes to, but we have to make sure we're saying yes first to those most important priorities. And and if we get those things in our calendar first, and we create that space for those most important things then it will cause our calendar to free up. And it's going to cause us to to say no to some things that maybe we kind of got ourselves roped into and, and we're, it's really something we're not even effective in anymore or passionate about anymore. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've gotten on committees that I've been to for a, on, for a long time or boards or different projects. And sometimes they, you know, they come to a time where it's time to, to say, I'm done with that. It's time to move on to some other thing. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay. And, and for those of us who are business owners, uh, we have to, um, you know, put on the Teflon vest uh, an awful lot and, and have grit (laughs) and be able to, you know, walk past those disappointments and get up every morning and, you know, continue the, the good fight. Um, what tools, would you suggest we use to stay encouraged and stay on course if there's anything um, in addition to what we've you know talked about? Sure. Well, it, it is definitely challenging being a business owner and I really believe it's about mindset. And when I think about my own secret of continued progress is due to two responses that I've used repeatedly through good times and especially the challenging times of life. And the first is that natural tendency toward optimism. And that's something I can sum it up in any given situation. My general perception is the cup is half full versus half empty. And the second is tenacity. Is as, as business owners and leaders, we have to choose to persevere. When we run into those walls, which is going to happen, we're going to run into walls, we're going to run into difficult circumstances, and we have to choose to not give up and to put one foot in front of the other and keep going when we run into those tough times. Uh, one, one that comes to mind, Diane, especially for our business, one of the most challenging times is when we went through the Great Recession. And overnight, our world changed drastically. And my business was going along and doing well. And uh, suddenly, I had clients successful clients who were beginning to struggle financially and we had one client partner of over 13 years that was shut down by the FDIC and wow. that was a time that yeah, it, it was creating a lot of fear around us and I had some of my own team members who had family members or spouses who had lost jobs our own project division dropped 30 percent overnight and I have to say that was a really scary time to be a business owner and I couldn't allow myself to get paralyzed by what was going on in, in the company, in the world around me. And I had to have a positive, optimistic mindset for my team. I needed to show up every day showing them that we were going to get through this and, and, and lead the way and be the one that set the example. And that wasn't that wasn't easy. This type of mindset is a choice. It's a choice yeah. that takes work, and it means looking not at problems as something that we can't solve, but as opportunities that that we can learn and grow from. Uh, and so that's that's been my job. It's your job, and we we've got to really look at how we show up every day and make sure it's in a way that's going to lead our company um, to go forward. 
Yeah, I love what you said about looking at things as opportunities because I think when you have that mindset, your problem solving skills go up dramatically. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Which then makes it easier to to overcome adversity and and disappointment because you feel empowered because you're in a problem solving mindset as opposed to uh, a negative now what am I going to do sort of mindset right right definitely well and I'm sure you can relate I mean we don't do it perfectly and I think if you can have some really great team members at your side that yeah. you can be able to share these things with and you can keep each other in check you know you, yeah. you set the standard that we are going to have a positive mindset here at our company this is this is how we are going to show up and if, and if I'm for some reason not showing up that way, then you call me on it and I'll do the yeah. same for you. Or you, know, you give someone a word of encouragement because you're catching them falling into that negative space. And we, we get attacked uh, with those negative critical thoughts and we can help each other get through that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, this is so great. It, it's, it's such a um, realistic and at the same time, empowering look at how we can uh, really be successful as we define success and, and as business owners. Uh, so I really appreciate you spending time with me, Janelle. Will you tell the listeners how they can get your book and uh, find you and, you know, the stuff you've got going on, please? You bet, Diane. Well, you can pick up your copy of The Success Lie wherever your favorite places to buy books, so on, online or your favorite bookstore. And then I invite you to connect with me personally at thesuccesslie.com, and you can get more information and connect with me there. And I am just so excited for people to get their hands on the book and the resources within the book and to really learn how to break the success lie, to overcome overwhelm, and take their life back. So thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And I am excited for them to do that too. And so thank you for writing the book and uh, being out there uh, helping folks, uh, you know, really succeed. It's really, we we need more of this kind of thing. And speaking of folks, uh, the listeners, uh, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, listening to Uh, Janelle and uh, the various other guests that that we've had on this podcast. And I would also like to thank our sponsor, Audible.com. To get your free copy of Audible.com and a free audiobook, please go to audibletrial.com slash business growth to sign up. As always, uh, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, Goodbye and good day. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Powder Donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Every family vacation, my kids break into the can can. Can we go to the theme park? Can we go to a ball game? Can we get snacks? It can get expensive. But at Red Roof, we get a great price on clean, comfortable rooms and wake up rested and ready to hit the road again. This summer, when we rest and repeat at Red Roof, staying two separate times can earn us a free night. Plus, Ready Reward members can save up to 20% with exclusive rates. Book at redroof.can. I mean, .com. Great careers are forged out of great relationships. Your success, whatever your field, relies and thrives on the support and insights of others. I'm Andy Lapata, an author and speaker on the power of professional relationships. In the Connected Leadership podcast, I have the privilege of interviewing people from around the world to understand the relationships that have made a difference on their journey and how their insights can help you. From Nobel Prize winners to Olympians, from NASA astronauts to peace campaigners, my guests have shared some captivating moments from their lives and careers. 
Combined with experts from leading universities, cutting-edge authors and giants of business, the Connected Leadership Podcast aims to inspire, educate and entertain. 